I mean no harm. Bantaraj. You could have blown the ship apart. Well, I did not know that. I must apologize for my ignorance. Who are you? And what do you want? I want to explain all to the man who is called Admiral Nelson. reflect such terrestrial hospitality. So far, your actions speak louder than your words. You almost killed two of my crewmen. Purely in self-defense, Captain. In each case, I was not the aggressor. As for the reactor, as I explained before, it was a case of... Yes, I know your ignorance. Exactly. I know you are consumed with curiosity, Admiral. So I would tell you I come from a water planet in deep space. Unlike the evolution of man, our civilization reached its height in the crustacean life form, such as myself. Well, there are other civilizations out there, then. Of course, Admiral. In fact, I was on my way to visit one of those planets when I lost power and drifted into the gravity of Earth. If you fell in on us by accident, as you say, when did you learn our language? And how do you know of Admiral Nelson? I know everything that has happened on Earth for as long as man has spoken aloud. Oh, yeah, you mean that old theory that... Uh... Sound waves are never lost. They echo through space forever. Yeah? Fact, not theory. The words never fade away. We have in manner of speaking a giant ear that hears all the words spoken on Earth. Hmm. Well, now that you are here on Earth, what are your plans? To leave as soon as possible. You said your craft was powerless. What is? But provide me with an atomic charge, and I can repower it. I'm not authorized to do that. Now, wait a minute, Lee. Uh, everything he says is reasonable. I know, Admiral. But I want to place him under tight security until the Defense Command decides what to do with him. They're waiting for a report now. Excuse me, General Cook. Aye, sir. SSRN Seaview calling General Cook at Pacific Defense Command. General Cook, standing by, sir. General Cook, this is... my own interest. If you will join me in my spacecraft, I can explain further. Well, nothing to lose by hearing what he has to say, Lee. It should be fairly obvious why I stopped your radio transmission. But I'm afraid it isn't. If my presence were known, it would trigger a wave of fear and hysteria, perhaps even a physical attack. You're under our protection. From enemies, yes. But not from friends like your scientists, who would put me under a microscope to see what makes me tick. Or your psychologists, who would try to brainwash me. I think you're exaggerating. What about your military, your General Cook? You honestly believe he would relinquish my spaceship once he gets his hands on it? Uh, there's something in what you say. If he is friendly, let him prove it to the authorities. Now, I'll take the responsibility, Lee, but one wrong move and all bets are off. I don't agree with you, Admiral, but uh, it's your decision. My only desire, Captain, is to repair my craft, not to spy on your mechanical toy. All right, but you can find to the missile room. You step out of line and you're in trouble. I accept your terms, Captain. I'll be in the control room. As a goodwill gesture, Admiral, would you like to inspect my ship? 